Pitch two, day three. If you know anything about recycling, it's probably just a series of depressing statistics. Only about 5% of plastic waste actually gets recycled. 25% of recycling has to get thrown away because it's contaminated. And don't forget the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a 600,000 square mile ocean trash vortex that's larger than the state of Alaska. (laughs) What a mess. But this is the pitch. So surely there's a company here to help clean things up. Enter Eco, an app that's using AI to get every student on every campus recycling properly. No greasy pizza boxes allowed. But how much money can you really make from trash? Is this the solution investors have been waiting for? Or will they pitch this business in the great startup garbage patch? That one's in the bay. I'm Josh Muccio. Welcome to The Pitch, where real entrepreneurs pitch real investors for real money. Hi, I'm Erica Wenger, and I'm general partner of Park Rangers Capital. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Yin, general partner at Hustle Fund. Hi, I'm Jillian Manis, managing partner of Structure Capital. Hi, I'm Charles Hudson, managing partner of Precursor Ventures. Hi, I'm Martin Tobias with Incisive Ventures. The pitch for Eco is coming up after this. Let's go! I can play one song on the guitar and nothing. Nothing. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name's Nicole. Erica. Nice to meet you, Nicole. Nicole. Martin. Nice to meet you. Elizabeth. Cute blazer. Charles, nice to meet you. (laughs) Thank you. Great to meet you all. Okay. We've all been there. Standing at the recycling bin, questioning, is this recyclable? And you're not alone. 96% of Americans are also confused on how to recycle. But this confusion is costing us. 219 million tons of recyclable waste enters our landfills every year. We spend over $200 billion just to send it there. My name is Nicole Sewell. I'm the CEO and founder of ECO. I've worked over the last four years while attending undergrad researching student and consumer behaviors around recycling. ECO is a mobile app that uses artificial intelligence to detect the recyclability of materials. You take a picture of anything and ECO gives you up to date and the most sustainable guidelines on how to dispose of your waste. And as you recycle, you earn points that are redeemable for discounts for products and services within your community. We've launched paid pilots at Georgia State and the Georgia Institute of Technology, and in the last five months have helped students disto- dispose over 50,000 items on our platform. And today I'm raising $750,000 to expand into universities where we plan to go to municipalities as well as corporate offices. So, and I invite you to join us in that. Thank you. Can I- we try like a quick test? Even let's just take this Starbucks mm-hmm. coffee cup. I don't know if it's recyclable. There's the plastic top thing. Parts, yeah. yeah, like yeah. what? Uh, it, would your app tell me this? Definitely. I took a picture up. and it is thinking about it. And it came up with plastic. Plastic takeout cup is what it says. And so everything that's in green is recyclable. Everything that's in red is unrecyclable. Everything in green is recyclable. Correct. So that's this is also based on Georgia Tech's recycling guidelines. Oh, yeah. Because those okay. are our campuses that we're on. Um, and then it'll also show you which bin to place it in, as well as where you can take it to on campus. Well, it's amazing to me just how little I know about recycling because it's saying that the plastic takeout cup is recyclable, mm-hmm. but the paper cup is not. Yes. So can you talk about the tech? Yeah, so Ryan Walden is my co-founder and CTO. Um, and so he is a machine learning engineer with years experience building machine learning models. And so right now we're using OpenAI's clip model, which creates a caption for every item that you take a picture of through the platform. And then it looks for that item in our database of materials. We actually started off as a hardware company. Um, our first iteration oh. was a recycling machine that accepted plastic bottles and aluminum cans. Huh. So we built the machine. Um, it was super beautiful. It was the sexiest machine I'd ever seen in my life. Like, super <laughs> proud of it. And launched it February 2020. But no one could use it because everyone went home and never oh, came back. Oh, my. <laughs> so um, that was when I started reading the EPA sustainability report. And so they outlined that reducing recycling contamination was their number one objective to increase recycling in the United States. Um, and how they recommended that we solve this problem was flyers and engaging social media campaigns. Uh-huh. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> like, what else? like, there's no innovation here. 
Um, and so that is what ultimately led to eco was like, okay, well, I bet if I could just take a picture of everything and it told me what to do, that would solve this problem. Yeah. And then you said Georgia State was a customer. Yes. Can you walk me through just like who's paid what so far? Yeah. So Georgia State and the Georgia Institute of Technology are our first customers. So we started them off with a semester pilot that cost $5,000, which I know, like no one negotiated. Yes, it was too low. <laughs> but if you got um, money from universities, like, yeah. Yeah, that's, like that's, that's, you should you get a gold star. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You never hear that. That's true. Um, and then it rolled over into a full year implementation that was $20,000. Oh. Um, and so that's what we are currently with both institutions on. We actually are exploring a pilot with Cox Enterprises right now. So we're just about to get into that corporate space. How many downloads have you gotten in, on these campuses? Yes. Yeah, so right now we have 1,500 students on the platform who use it. We have a 33% monthly active user rate. And on average, students recycle 35 items each month. So we've seen really great usage. And the fraud was like less than 1%. We had like 10 students who were ridiculous, um, and then we, <laughs> which was interesting. And then we also had a 12% reward redemption rate, which was much lower than what we expected. But still, the usage was incredibly high. The vast majority of our new users came from referrals. So the average user referred three of their friends on the platform. Does a university benefit in any monetary way by recycling more? Yeah. Or yeah. is there a compliance? Yeah. Or is there a mandate yeah. that is they have to not, Is it just feel good or is it, are there other things? Yeah. Yes. So glad you asked that. Universities actually pay contamination fees on their recycling bills. And so these are fees that they have to pay on top of what they already pay in recycling. So this can be anywhere between seventy five dollars to $150,000 a year wow. just oh, wow. okay. on contamination. So in theory, if we can educate their students, increase volume, increase quality, we can lower those costs for them, but also increase revenue because they can sell these materials for higher mm -hmm. prices on the market. When will you have enough data to be able to uh, show the results? Because if you increase their r recycling volumes, but the contamination number stays up, you might actually worsen the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So. The thing about the solution is that we need high adoption in order to effectively say that we were able to reduce contamination or if we saw any changes in the recycling stream overall. Mm -hmm. And so that's why in these next two years, we're focusing so much on adoption on the campus. It's going um, to take two years? Um, or just the year. Um, I'm just, because right and now. in that deal, mm -hmm. who is responsible for marketing? What's great about the university is that we're able to market through all of their channels. So So you're doing the marketing and that has to come out of the 20,000 that you're getting in revenue? No. So they do focus on all of the communications on campus. The only thing that we have done is we've had tablings on the campus where we've told students about Eco and get them to download the application. Our user acquisition cost is only $1.50 because like we just put like we have cookies and whatever to get students to download the application. So the university will send emails, they'll put up flyers, they'll also put signage on like their TVs and all those things that we don't have to manage. Mm -hmm. And we really put the onus on the university to market the application. I, mean, I know you're, you say that they're responsible for it, but I've, I've seen these kind of things where, you, you know, you sign a demo deal and then nobody's really responsible for customer acquisition. And at mm -hmm. the end of the, of the LOI, everybody's like, this thing didn't work. So one of the things that we know is that the cost of the pilot is, was extremely, extremely low. Mm -hmm. And so right now, Georgia Tech, Georgia State have this waste zero goal by 2030. And there's no way for them to effectively track how they are reaching these goals today. So ECO is the first application that they're actually able to see in real time what students are actually putting in recycling bins so that they can effectively market back to the students. So I think that is actually more so the value to the institution versus the rebate part, because now ECO gives them a lens on, okay, it's Halloween and students just recycled candy wrappers. Let's do some effective marketing around why you can't dispose those materials. Right. The insight part is really what's valuable to the institution because right now they're really shooting in the dark trying to figure out how to better engage their constituents. Is there a penalty that at the end if they do not reach these goals? So Georgia, no, uh, we don't have any policy around this. <laughs> exactly. um, so it's more so just from the top down the pressure of, okay, the university wants to reach this goal. I have a job to do. How am I going to get there? But I know from California, you guys do have um, penalties, penalties for that. Yeah. So we are going to make our way here one way or another. Oh, don't make the rest of America California, please. <laughs> please. All right. 
So the investors are starting to see dollar signs in trash. But is this business ready to start turning that trash into treasure? That's coming up. Welcome back. Nicole's app, Eco, can help colleges save tens of thousands of dollars in contamination fees. But first, students have to actually use it. Here's Erica. I have a question on the social side of this. I was in a sorority. It was competitive with, you know, who was wearing the cute dresses and who was getting good grades. All that. <laughs> I'm thinking about, like, the reward piece of this. Mm -hmm. And, like, especially in, like, the Greek system, like, house versus house and <laughs> student versus student, grade versus grade. House points. That's house points. Stuff, yeah. yeah, when I uh -huh. think about, like, you know, and, and, I mean, colleges sometimes do, like, color wars mm -hmm. and you know, like opening day, orientation, whatever. Has that been something that you've been getting interest about? And have you yes. tested that at all? So we haven't <laughs> tested it yet, but we have gotten considerable interest, particularly between Georgia Tech and Georgia State because they're mm -hmm. kind of like rivalries. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So like being able to know that Georgia Tech oh. was recycling much more than Georgia State was a huge thing on their campus. But we are looking <laughs> to do those like uh, dormitory against dormitory, um, yeah. class between class, yeah. friend group against friend group even. So we're working this summer to really bolster those social components of the application. I would look into a lot of like consumer behavior studies mm -hmm. about like, do people want money or do they want pride over their friends and yeah. their community? I think you'll find over and over again, it's actually more right. about the ego. Yeah, um, It's not about the money. The more you can play that up, even you just talking about Georgia Tech versus Georgia State, mm -hmm. I actually think there's a lot of budget there too because people all know what rivalry is like. Uh -huh. That's, for sure. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's very true. An eco rivalry. Very true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much are you raising? What what is that? I don't know that you mentioned that yet. Yeah, so we're raising seven fifty, and okay. we just started, um, and so we're doing a safe, um, and the cap is five million. So we're just starting. And with what that. goals mm -hmm. do you hope to achieve in the next six to twelve months with that? And how long does it last? Yeah, so that lasts us twelve months, um, and so our goal is to launch more universities and corporate offices in the southeast. So that is like our focus, and our goal is twenty institutions by the end of next year. Yeah, we invested in a business mm -hmm. that's kind of analogous called Gooder. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, on yeah. the food recovery side. Oh, yeah. And the one thing I learned is there is a lot more money in these corporations. And for, for Gooder, it's a mix of like feel good plus tax credit plus a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. And I suspect universities have more money here than is obvious. I just don't know how much more money there is here. Mm -hmm. So I really like this business. I don't think I can get there on the current round just because I'm I'm not I, I think I have in my mind a sense of how big the university tickets would have to be and I'm I'm not sure they're there yet. So I, I guess my one piece of advice would be I think you could dramatically upsize the impact that this has on campus mm -hmm. by leaning into that student to student virality because that yeah. will get them recycling more things, which will make the university say, Wow, this is like a much bigger thing. And then I think with that you could probably unlock much bigger contracts with them. That's great feedback. Yeah. Thank you. I too am out. I think the big things for me were willingness to pay of the colleges. Yeah. I think we, we know the 20K we didn't negotiate, which is fine. No one negotiates the first deal. I think I'm not clear on like how much higher that could go. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, I think there's some really interesting, like a B2B SaaS play with licensing data to like the Coca-Cola's. Coca-Cola versus Sprite. You know, I hate to be so competitive. I feel like everything I'm saying is like <laughs> no. hitting rivalries. <laughs> but, but you're right. If you say That's like Coca-Cola, actually, more of our customers recycle. are eco-conscious. Yeah. They recycle. They are young. They are cool. Mm -hmm. That like, versus Sprite versus whatever. That's brilliant. You can't pay for that. Sprite is owned by Coke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. really? Yeah. Yes. They all own each other these days. Right. It's hard to keep it straight. I've been thinking about this problem for a while. I've invested in it twice. And I think we are at a time where we've got a convergence of technologies that could potentially create another wave of this kind of thing because it's so yeah. easy, like doing it on your phone. I think that's interesting. Um, what I'm a little concerned, or actually a lot concerned about, is yeah. that you don't have a clear, quick go-to-market strategy. So if you had a B2B plan that was somehow um, sparked data collection with some free viral loop on campus that drove that other thing, that would be much more interesting to me at this stage. And based on that, that's not what you're building now, I'm out. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm out 
it's just a little too early for me to understand the whole monetization mm -hmm. piece of this. But I would like to stay in touch with you because I'd like to see how you're how are you going to drive the engagement of yeah. the whole university? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nicole, I really like what you're doing, and I'm very impressed by your sales to these two campuses and also this corporate. Um, I think that's just honestly really hard to do, and I think you should you know, definitely pat yourself on the back, even though you may not have optimized it or tried to optimize it. The, the thing I'm trying to really grapple with is the customer acquisition, and there are a couple of different customers it's sort of this B two B to C model, which it, it gets a little bit tricky around. Like, how do you get to sort of the, the next layer of customer, the students? And mm -hmm. I think people had some great ideas on how to get yeah. there. I just think it's going to be too pricey um, to to try to like. How do you go from fifteen hundred to a whole campus without increasing that spend? I think I'm having a hard time in my mind, kind of reconciling those those numbers. Yeah. So I'm out. No worries. Thank you all Thank so you. much. Thank this you. is amazing. Yeah. Would you guys be okay if I took a selfie? Yeah. Sure. Oh, is that worth yeah, Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Just want to commemorate this moment. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around. Oh, gosh. Okay. Let's Josh see. might I'm make you like... wait to post it. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay? Okay, let's see. Okay. Hello. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you all again. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you. There okay. is big money to unlock in there somewhere. It's it's just aligning it. I think she just needs a little more time. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I want to like after this, I'm like I want to connect you with USC. Yeah. That's yeah. some big money yeah. instead of going like Georgia, which is maybe not as progressive, no, maybe a little no. bit more state school. Yeah. Let's go to USC. Let's go <laughs> well, somewhere where money. we've got a lot of donors. A lot of donors. <laughs> I, 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 I love the the idea of challenges and a lot of I these. Do too. Uh, mm -hmm. And and if she had a, an app like. Um, the, the the RA could compete against another one yes. and you leaned into that sort of challenge thing you'd get a bunch of people starting these things and then you'd get the campuses from the bottoms mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. if she had a bottoms up strategy she could also then go and get the money from the campus because you go to USC and go look you know there's already eight sororities that are competing against yeah, each yeah, other yeah. Mm -hmm. why don't you buy a site license because they're already doing it Georgia, I mean, the for God's coast. sake, she did this in Georgia, <laughs> which is mind blowing as it is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? Right. Mm -hmm. Are you guys sure? Yeah. Yeah. Sure you don't want to invest? No. Not now. I, I do think there's something in here, but this is not the right model. Well, the investors didn't want to get their hands dirty with this one. They're like, go figure it out. Here are some ideas charge more money, make recycling a competition, come back to me next round. But ideas, they're not money. How can Nicole give the investors what they want while also staying true to what she knows is best for the business? Hear what Nicole did next in episode 124 of The Pitch Podcast. Link in the description. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, and hit that bell, hit that bell. I'll see you next week on The Pitch Show.